I was wondering, I was praying about what to title this message, you know, and this word new beginnings was coming, just new beginnings for Jacob and his family. Now we know the story that uh, Joseph was messed up by his brothers and taken to Egypt and by the Midianites and there he worked as a slave, you know, a servant in Potiphar's house and then he gets accused, accused of adultery and then he's into prison and then from prison God lifts him up. So this is the story, the background story. Now think about it. There is Joe, Jacob back in, where is he? Canaan, right? He's there, he's sitting on his lawn chair, he's depressed. We're depressed because, number one, his son is gone. Number two, his daughter has been raped. You know? Number three, Judah has gone wavered. He's messed up. He's got issues. And he's sitting, he's depressed. And think of a prophet comes to him and says, Jacob, the new beginnings. Behold, I'm going to do a new thing. You know? You can see it. Be encouraged. And Jacob looks at him and wondering, what's wrong with this guy? And the new beginning starts. Famine hits Canaan. I mean, what news is this? New beginnings and begins with a famine. But what we see here in this chapter, in the book of uh, uh, Joseph, in, in Genesis 46 and 47, that there is the sovereignty of God on Joseph's life. And there is the responsibility of man. And the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man go hand in hand in governing his purpose. So we're going to look at that. We're also going to look at the Jesus factor that, you know, Seth and David has been bringing up over and over again. We're also going to see the Old Testament and the New Testament, the kingdom being lived there and resonated and, 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 and embracing the cross, which takes place so clearly in the book of Genesis. We're going to see the process of new beginning, how God works his way. So we might not finish it all, but let's hope that, you know, whatever we need to hear. There's so much in this book, and Seth really counseled me to concentrate on one thing. I was thinking of jumping all over, <laughs> you know. So let's see what God would highlight. We can focus with that. Amen? Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen? So the God factor, the sovereignty of God... And the man factor, the responsibility of man always works together in our story here on earth. Now think about it. God has a strategy. He has a plan. He has, you know, his crew. He has his wisdom in his sovereignty to execute what he has for us. In his strategy... Right now, he, he, he smuggles Joseph. He smuggles him from, you know, right from Canaan, from the hands of his brothers into the Midianites and then into Potiphar's house and then into the jail to make him, you know, a top man in Egypt, right? He trained him under Potiphar. He, he gave him a heart for the lowest and the worst and finally lifted him up to the next in command in the land of, of, of Egypt and even in the whole world. Joseph stood out. He was a man that God honored. You know? And it's very difficult to understand God's strategy in our lives. Right? How he takes us. When you look back in your life, where were, you, where were you in darkness and today where we are in the light? If it wasn't for God, we would have been lost. Amen? We would have been out there 
but God lifted us up. God shine or shone his light upon us that we could know Jesus. But the truth is in Isaiah 55 verse 8, he says, my ways are not your ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, you know, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, my ways declares the Lord. And it's very difficult to understand God's ways. Amen. What is happening to me now, Lord? You promised me great future. You promised me good time. You promised me you will be with me. But Lord, nothing, nothing that's in line with your promises is happening to me. Be encouraged. God is a God of strategy, beloved. Amen. He's got you in his hand. He's got your future in his hand. He's got your children in his hand. He's got your ministry in his hand. Walk with him. Hallelujah. He's not only a, you know, it says in Psalm 139, my frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when yes, as yet, there was none of them. There was none of them. He already knew all your days, beloved. All your days. He knew your ups and he knew your down. He knew your good time and he knew your bad time. He knew when you were closed and he knew when you were stray, strayed away. But you know what? He kept up after you. He's not given up on you. Why? Because God has a plan for your life, beloved. Amen. You might not understand what's happening now. But that's why we're not called to understand. We are called to trust. Amen. Amen. If you try to understand in the limited mind, you will disturb our peace. We'll lose our joy. That's why he said, trust the Lord your God at... I'll thank you, Cheryl. Hallelujah. All times, beloved. Amen. That means you trust him in the morning. You trust him in the evening. You trust him in the noontime. You trust him when doors are shut. You trust him when doors are open. You trust him when things are not going well. You trust him when things are going well. Why? Because God is committed to you. God is committed to the plans he has for you. God is committed to lifting you up, to honoring you, beloved. Amen. Trust him. Amen. God has a plan. He works through our weaknesses. His plan. His plan works through our frailties to usher his moves in making Joseph the most important person sought after in the whole world. Why he's constantly at the same time changing Joseph's heart. A bragger, a dream, you know, Oh, I got a multicolored shirt. Oh, dad, these children of yours, they are a mess. They're a nuisance. He often bought bad report. Aha. Uh -huh. That doesn't go well with God. I said, oh, something needs to change here. You know, he could have easily come, bought a whole uh, 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 troop from Egypt there and say, guys, move on. Joseph's going to be the prince. Let's take him on a caravan. No, no. He would have had a messed up guy. Right? But God works his way through Joseph's weaknesses. Amen. Are you struggling this morning? Are you going through a difficult time? You're, you're probably in a place where you're wondering the mistakes I have made. Are they going to overtake me? Are they going to mess me up? My failures are becoming bigger than me. I want to tell you this morning, Romans 8.37 says, You are more than conquerors to Christ Jesus, his son. Amen. In your weakness, you're a conqueror. Why? Because you didn't die. Jesus died for you. He saved you from your sin. He destroyed the enemy over your life. He calls you now the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the Jesus. He has a plan. That's why Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Aren't you glad that your boss doesn't have the plans? 
Aren't you glad your wife doesn't have the plan? Amen. Aren't you glad God has the plans? Amen. Hallelujah. When God has the plan, there is freedom. You can be who you are. You don't have to be you put up. You don't have to hold. You can just walk in the liberty of God for whom the Son sets free is free. You are free, beloved. Free to worship. Free to walk in holiness. Free to seek God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. Amen. Romans 8.28 says, In all things. In how many things? All things. He works for good, beloved. Everything. Amen. Everything that you messed up. Everything that you failed in. All your errors. God's busy working on it. He's saying, don't worry, my son, I got this. Just stay close to me. Just meditate upon my word. Just pray at all times. That's for Philippians, it says, give thanks in everything. Amen. Why? Because God is committed to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2, 13. What does it say? It is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Amen. You might not realize it. You might not even know. Yeah. God is working in you. He's working overtime. He never sleeps. He then not say, okay, take a break. Uh, let me have a nap and come and then I'll see you. No, no, no. He's 24-7 in your life. He knows your, Psalm 39 says, he knows you're going in and you're coming out. You're sitting and you're standing. If you are in the darkest places, even there he would be. Can you run away from his presence? No, beloved. COVID cannot destroy God's plans over you. Your enemies cannot destroy God's plans over you. Those working with you cannot destroy God's plans with you because God has got you. Amen. He's bigger than you. He's bigger than the company you work for. He's bigger than your boss. Amen. He not only has a plan, but God has a crew. He has all his puppets working behind the scene. Amen. He uses our enemies to work out his plans and purposes. He used the brothers. He used the Midianites who hated. He used the Egyptian, you know, who looked down on the Jews. He uses all these enemies of his people to prosper them. So he uses, and he keeps constantly, unassumingly promoting Joseph to his final place of honor. Amen. Are you, are you, are you losing your job? Are you struggling with, 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 with a perspective of your future, where it's going? Are you wondering where you're going to be five years from now? I want to tell you, don't wonder where you're going to be five years from now. Enjoy the present because God is with you. The kingdom of heaven is over you. The spirit of God lives in you. Amen. There are angels all around. You are the most powerful and the most powerful man and woman on earth, beloved. God lives in you. He's given you all authority. Amen. He says, all authority is given unto me. And you are seated there with him in, in the heavenly places. Enjoy your moment with God. Amen. Do not look ahead and worry. You know, worry only brings anxiety. And lose your joy and your peace. Amen. The moment you lose your joy and your peace, know that you have entered enemy's territory. Something is wrong. Get out. Amen. Go back to your finish line. The blood of Jesus. We overcome the blood. The word of God says, we overcome by the blood and the word of our testimony. Amen. God has a plan. He has a strategy. He has his crew. 
Amen. He says, Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. Amen. God is not only with you, but he is for you, beloved. Amen. That's why he says, give thanks in everything. That's why it's good to have enemies. No? God, what he says, God says, give your enemy a cup of tea. Put a garland around because he's a blessing in disguise. God is going to use your enemies to prosper you, beloved. Don't gossip against them. Don't speak against them. Bless them. Amen. Invite them home for dinner. Amen. To your house, not to my house, okay? <laughs> Give them a good meal. They're God's blessing in disguise. Amen. God not only has his crew, God has his wisdom. Amen. It's, it says, and while the enemy think they have Joseph, he keeps delivering Joseph from evil, wicked, strong people, powerful people in all their wicked schemes couldn't keep Joseph from furthering into the next curriculum of, of his school to establish his character and prospering him in whatever he put his hand into. The Bible sums it up like this in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 to 6. The Lord was with Joseph. Amen. And he became a successful man in the house of the Egyptians. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't prosper. Yeah, our skills can play a role. Our gifts can play a role. But when the Lord's hand is upon you, beloved, God will prosper you. Amen. Joseph was not a very educated man. At 17, he was out from home. But there he was, God trained him up in the house of Potiphar. In the enemy's rank, God traced him to take over that land. Can you believe God's wisdom? David, he took David and trained him right under Saul. Showed him about everything about the palace and then took him back and then took him back and made him the king. God exposes us sometime to the things that he has for us. He shows us in our dream. He gives us vision. Amen. He puts us in those places to lift us up. So be encouraged this morning. It says here in Isaiah 40 verse 28 to 30. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall and be exhausted. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, new vigor. Amen. They shall mount up like they'll be promoted. Hallelujah. They shall run and not be weary. Amen. They shall be hastened. They shall be strong in their pursuit of their destiny. Amen. Waiting is not in vain, beloved. When things are not happening, hang in there. When things have slowed down, you know, very often, beloved, your circumstances will always be opposite to what God has spoken over you. If you look at Joseph's life, if you look at David's life, you look at Jacob's life, everything was opposite. Amen? All they had to do is trust God. For God keeps his word. He'll never let you down. His understanding is unsearchable. How does he operate billions of galaxies? Millions of stars in each galaxy. And he knows each one by name. Amen. God uses those who are against us to promote us and bring us, bring glory to his name. That's the God we serve who makes us secured. Amen. By using our enemies to work for us. 
He says in, in, in Exodus chapter 14, verse 17, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them and I will gain glory to Pharaoh and his army through his chariots and horsemen. The Moses is right before the Red Sea and he's got the enemies chasing his people. And God said, Moses, relax. I'm going to show my glory to these crazy Egyptians. Amen. And bring honor to my name. That's the awesomeness of the God we serve. Amen. He is with you. He's got new beginnings for you. Just as we see he had new beginnings for Jacob. And there's no way he could believe it. Why? Because everything was a mess around him. Yeah. God uses, in Psalm 105, verse 19, it says, what he foretold came to pass till the word of the Lord proved him. Joseph said big things about himself. But Psalm 105, verse 19 says, that till the word of the Lord proved him true. Amen. Time, God uses time to execute his plan. And to prepare us for what he has for us. Amen. In that time, God allows suffering. In a, but in that suffering, he wants endurance. And through that endurance, he brings our character. Amen. To prepare us for what he has for us. Amen. Suffering is part of God's plan. Amen. He says here in Romans chapter 5 verse 3. You know, suffering produces endurance. Not only, but that we rejoice in our suffering. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Amen. For God uses suffering. He uses persistence. He uses endurance. He uses character. He uses our gifts and tries to advance us into the next stage of his working and networking to be successful in all that he has called to do. Suffering is important, beloved. Amen. Because through suffering, it's like an athlete. When an athlete, he's running. He's got his goal. He wants to pursue his destiny. But he has a choice. He can either respond to his body that's given up and saying, stop, that's enough, you can't do it. Or he can not listen to his body and keep his eyes to the goal and build up something that you cannot buy and that's something called endurance. Amen? It helps you in the long run. And endurance, when it's reached its full potential in, in pursuit of what God, that you don't give up. That's why it's First Peter chapter two, uh, was uh, First Peter, Second Peter chapter one, was five and six. It says, "Now to your knowledge, add self-control, and to your self-control, add persistence." That means you have done everything you can. You have fasted and you have prayed. You have sought the Lord. You are walking after the Lord, but nothing good is happening. Everything is sinking. Nothing seems to be favorable. That's what God is saying. It's time to endure. Press on. Why? Because God breaks that bubble that we grow up in where he answers our prayer and he, and he meets our needs. But then God is taking us along to build a relationship that I don't just love him for what he provides, but I love him for who he is. God of heaven and earth, the great I am, who died for me. Amen. Sometimes I share the faith, my faith with unbelievers, you know. I said, oh, Jesus, what he's done for you? I said, the gods that you serve, has anyone died for you? You know, my God died for me. He paid a price for my sin. Amen. I was an ugly man. And you can ask my wife, sometimes I am still, you know. But he loves me. Amen. And he's changing me, beloved. Endure. Because endurance bring, brings something which many want and few have, and that is character. Amen. 
But when we pursue, our spirit is being trained to say no to the things that we have to say no and say yes to the thing that we have to say yes. Amen? And endurance brings character. That was Joseph. Joseph persevered. Amen? The Midianites hated the Jews. How they must have ill-treated him. There, the Bible says he was crying out to his brother, save me, save me, and yet they didn't hearken to his call. But Joseph persevered. You'll be a top man, and everything is downhill for Joseph. Joseph persevered. Amen. Do not look at the present circumstances. Look to God. Look to the promises. There is a call over your life. God has called you. Amen. He saved you by the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says the book of John, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you to go and bear fruit. God's sovereignty still stands over your life. He is not given up on you. He loves you more than you can love yourself. Amen? Aren't you tired of yourself sometimes that you do the same mistake again and again? And then we think, oh, God must be tired of me. Say, hello! I rejoice over you. I dance over you. He's a father who loves you. Can you find someone else greater than your God? A Jesus who is in love with you, who walks with you, who talks with you, who beholds you, who quietens you with his love. I mean, you read God's word, it is filled with God's love because God loves, empowers us to say no to this world and yes to God. Amen? Persevere, beloved. He's forming a good character. Amen? Amen? He's got his enemies working for you. You're feeling weak. He will use it for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And character prepares us for new beginnings. And here we see, I've got nine minutes to go. Okay. I have to keep track of time. Be obedient to my leaders. Correct. That's what the Bible says. Now the stage is set for the new beginning for Jacob. Okay. Here he's, he, he's in Canaan. He's got Beersheba. This is not a place where beer was made, okay? This is, this is it's just named Beersheba, a well of oath, of seven, seven wells, or well of promise. There's so many meanings to that name, okay? And then there's a long trek to Egypt. Jacob is revived. His son is alive. Let's go. He comes to Beersheba, he stops. Why? The fears of his patriarchs come to him. In Genesis chapter 12, 10, Abraham, you know, he, he struggled when he was in Egypt. He lied about Sarah, you remember that? He messed up. Then in, again we see Genesis 6, 10, he acquired Hagar there. The problem that is still available today, that hounded and still hound the Jews. Great mistakes he made, you know. And then was his son Isaac. And his son Isaac was preparing to go to Egypt. He was in Beersheba and God said, stop, don't be like your crazy dad. You know, hold on. Be here, I will prosper you here. And God stopped Isaac. And now Jacob is in Beersheba. He's reminded of all this. And he's wondering, because his own life, he's made so many mistakes. He needs mercy, you know. He deceived his dad and took the blessing. He didn't have to do that. God is sovereign. He could have made sure the blessing would come to him. So he's like a runaway, a fugitive. And there God visits him and says, Jacob, Jacob, I am God. You know, assuring Jacob that he's there. He's God. He says, I do not be afraid to go to Egypt for I am. I'm going with you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why the Bible says, God gives a promise, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you till the end of time. Here is Jacob in his lowest. He's struggling. He's wondering where he's making the right mistake. And he begins to seek God because then it says, he arose after 
God met with him. He, God, God instilled that confidence. God instilled that peace in him that I am with you. You are not alone. And therefore God would encourage those of you who are seeking God and are wondering where you are at this moment. If everything that's happening to you is it God's will or am I out of God's will? Listen, God would take your name this morning and say, Corey, Corey, I am with you. Dane, I am with you. He takes your name not once. He takes your name every time the Bible says he knows you by name. My sheep, listen to my voice. Be encouraged. He not only knows your name, he knows the day you were born. He knows which hospital you were born. He knows how you were born. Amen. He knows everything about you. He knows what job, where you studied. He, he's got you carved on the palm of his hand. He's a God. He loves you and this morning he would say fear not I am with you I go with you hallelujah amen you are not alone like Jacob let's offer sacrifices of praise 13 15 therefore let us continually offer sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips and giving thanks to him in all things praise him beloved when you can't understand, worship him. When it doesn't make sense, thank him. Why? He's got a strategy, he's got a plan, he's got his crew, he's got his wisdom, and they're all working for you. Behind the scene, Isaiah 64, verse 4, he's saying, God works on those who wait upon him. He doesn't forget those who wait upon him. He's not absent-minded, he doesn't have dementia. Though he's thousands of years old, you know, he knows it all, beloved. Amen. And there we see a Joseph, a man, Jacob, a man need for mercy. And Joseph, a man who found justice. They meet together. Mercy and justice. And a great reunion takes place like the cross of Calvary, where justice and mercy met and brought on favor to the ends of the earth in receiving Jesus Christ the Lord. That was the turning point for Jacob in being a nation. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that was where, where the lost and found from despair to hope, from, from frailty, from famine to prosperity, God turned everything around. And that's what happened at the cross. The only place in the world where justice and mercy made. In this world, you can either have justice or you can either have mercy. You cannot have both. And that's why courts were designed to either show mercy, to either show justice. But only one court of heaven offers you both at the same time. And therefore, there's justice and mercy over your life now. You are free by the justice that God has provided you. And by the mercy that has visited you through his son Jesus Christ. Do not go back to condemnation. Amen. It's like this story. There were two friends you know and they both grew up and they separated. They studied together and one went his way and the other went his way. One grew up to be a judge and the other grew up to be a criminal. But one day while this friend is sitting on his chair, he recognizes this criminal as his friend that he studied in school. He, want, he loved him. He wanted to show mercy on him. But he couldn't. Because he had to be just. Amen. So he, he, he called this man and, and, and declared him guilty. And declared his price that he had to pay. And then he got up from his seat and goes to the stand and writes a check and pays it in full. That's what Jesus did. Amen. He Paid it in full, beloved. There's nothing you can contribute towards it. Not your good works. Because sometimes when things are not going right, you wonder, am I not doing right? Is there something I've not done wrong? Or maybe I've not prayed. Or maybe your works are nothing. They are filthy rags, beloved. Because God's grace is powerful over your life. And it's not a grace that gives you license to sin, but the grace that a pathway to grow in holiness in Him. Amen. 
justice and mercy met and turned everything around. And therefore he says in Psalm 23 verse 4, Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. God is with you. He's got his rod to fight your enemies. And he's got his staff to guide you. He doesn't spank you. He spanks your enemies, beloved. And if you've gone astray, He'll hook you up and pull you back. Right then? Then preach that. <laughs> Amen. And he guides you. Amen. He is for you. Hallelujah. And there, a new beginning for, for a nation of 70 people to be in the prime of God gives them, instead of shame, he gives them double honor. They have the best of the land. You will not suffer shame. Be strong. Amen. For God has not called you to put you to shame. God has called you to be his bride. Amen. I wouldn't want my bride to be put to shame. Amen. He wants to honor you. He wants to clothe you. That's why he's given you the garments of salvation. Amen. And the sword of the spirit to rise up in the strength and honor of God. God has called you. Seth, God has called you. He's chosen you. You are a leader. His hand is upon your life and upon your family. And he says, rise my son in the authority of God for you. Because I placed you for such an hour of this. Said, you are a man after my heart. Stretch out your hands and you see the power of God moving through your life. And healing people and delivering people. You are called to raise his church up. Continue to seek him for God is for you and he loves you. Said, he will never give up on you. He knows when you are up and he knows with your down. But he says, I am with you always. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Dana, God is with you. He loves you. He delights in you, Dana. His hand is upon you. He says, be strong and courageous. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Amen, Taylor. The hand of God is upon you. He's got you in his, in his arms. He holds you in his arm and he loves upon you. He says, I am I'm your, your, your bridegroom. I am your best friend. Be, be encouraged, Taylor. God is with you and Kari. He loves you as a couple. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Where's Leah? Leah, God loves you and cares for you. He's raising you up as a leader. Amen. His love is poured out on you. You are going to be a leader to travel to the ends of the earth. Travel the world for his glory. Do not be discouraged in this time. He's putting his joy in you. He loves you just the way you are. He says your voice is beautiful. He says everything that you do, he delights in. And you are his glorious one, Leah. Be encouraged, Leah. Be strong. God is with you. Where's Judah? Judah, God has called you to be a leader. He's growing you up. He, you, you bring a uh, blessing. You delight God. And he loves the way you serve Judah. With a glad heart. Amen. He's not forgotten anything that you do for his kingdom. Everything about you is special to uh, Judah. You're a leader in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Michaela, right? Yeah, God has watched over you. He's brought you in his perfect plan. He's seen the hard work that you've given. You've seen the toil and labor when you fell abandoned. And he says, I am making all things new for you. Trust me. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to end. I mean, I could still go on, but I want to be, I don't want to carry on. Amen. Amen. So we see the cross, we see the kingdom there. That Joseph the new is living in the fruit of the spirit in Egypt and prospering. And here's Jacob the old is, is struggling. Amen. And that's what you can live in the new like David lived. When David lived, there was no praise and worship in the temple. There was the Mosaic law. But David was a man of the spirit. He lived in the liberty of God. He brought praise and worship in the temple. He lived in the New Testament while he was in the Old Testament. Amen. And that's what in God, through prayer, through fasting, we can pull down things what God has for us. Amen. For this time, therefore, be a man of prayer. God is working all 
things for good. I speak new beginnings over you. The church is going to change, beloved. Green month is going to change. God is going to pour His Spirit. And you guys are going to speak in tongues and going to prophesy. Because God gave Joseph a prophetic word that he's going to be a nation when he was just 70. Today, Israel has 22 million people, 9 in Israel and 14 all around the world. They are the highest in technology. Amen. God prophesied over them 2,000 years ago. Amen. Do you, are you enjoying the prophetic over your life? Amen. Get hold of the prophetic because living a Christian life without the prophetic is like playing football without goalposts. Amen. We need the prophetic, but that keeps us focused on what God has called us and chosen. Amen. This morning, we want to pray for you quickly. We have five minutes. Now, what time we start the congregation prayer? Learn 20. Let's pray. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. God wants to touch you this morning, beloved. The presence of God is here. If you need a touch from God this morning, in whatever circumstance you are, just stand where you are. Say, God, here I am. Touch me. Come on. God, here I am. Touch me. And we have the worship team up, please. Sorry, Tiffany, I forgot. Please come. Amen. Say, this, that touch me, Lord. It's between you and God. God has a strategy. God has a plan. God has a crew. God got his wisdom. And he's smuggling you into what he has for you. Your weaknesses doesn't make God insecure, beloved. He's powerful. He's greater than your weaknesses. That's why he says you are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. It's time to be strong. Do not listen by of the lies of the devil. The lies of the devil are going to come to discourage you, saying you are useless. See the mistakes you have made. See the problems you have created. Beloved, the blood of Jesus wipes all that and cancels all that hallelujah because he lives you will live come on let's worship God thank you Jesus Just open your hands before God say God here I am touch me this morning because you are chosen 